Okay, hi everyone, my name is Peter Ollett. I'm uh, from Australian Boating College, WA, and uh, we're making these videos to sort of make it easier for you guys to understand what we call the Skipper's Ticket Workbook. I've got one just here, hang on. So one of these, although you can't get these anymore, um, you've got to get it online now as a PDF. But anyway, it's the same information. It's hard work. There's lots of information. There's lots of data. What happens is <clears throat> you might be coming to do your skipper's ticket for a jet ski or water skiing. You know, you might leave water in a dam. You could be going 50 mile offshore. You could be just a crabber in the Manjo estuary. Or you, whatever. Okay, there's that many different types of skippers doing different types of things and they're trying to squeeze everyone into one ticket. So what you guys need to know, you need to know a little bit about everything on the day you come and do your test. Okay, and then off you go down your path and do your thing on the water. Okay, so the recreational skippers ticket is for anyone over 14 is the minimum age to come and do it. And it's suitable for any recreational boat. You need it if it's over 6 horsepower. If you've got a boat smaller than 6 horsepower, 6 or less, you don't need it. Although you're probably going to be going backwards in a sea breeze. But anyway, RST, it's easier to say than recreational skipper's ticket. You need it once it's over 6 horsepower. Minimum age to come and do your ticket is 14. 14 to 16 year olds, you put on your restrictions, which is 8 knots, which is the magic number. If it's knots, it's always 8 knots. Um, unless it's signed saying otherwise, but 8 knots is the general number. And um, daylight hours only. So if you're 15, you know, there's not much point being on a jet ski because you can't go quicker than 8 knots until you're 16. Okay? Only one person on the boat needs a ticket. You don't necessarily have to be the one skippering, as in behind the wheel, but you're the one that's responsible. Okay? So um, then when you hit 16, you're off your restrictions. And off you go. There's a few extra restrictions for water skiing. Water skiing is a bit of a high risk sport. There's lots of people in the water, high speed boats, close proximity to the people. Um, if you've ever been to Deep Water Point or Belmont Ski Area, it's crazy in summer. Okay. Um, so the extra restrictions there minimum age to drive a ski boat is 17. Same age you can drive a car in WA, so 17 is the minimum age. And then you should all know we need an observer on the boat. Okay, now the observer for water skiing has got to be minimum age of 14. Okay, same age you can do the ticket. That's the observer. All the observer worries about is what's going on behind with the skier. That's it. It's not rocket science. It's just so the skipper doesn't have to keep turning around looking at the skier. They can keep their eyes on what's going on in front of them and there's a lot going on in the ski areas. Um, so there's a few numbers to remember there. 14 is the minimum age to do the ticket. 14 to 16, you're on your restrictions, 8 knots and daylight hours only, 17 is a minimum age to drive a ski boat. Now, something people get confused about all the time is the registration. Okay, now registration is just means the government knows what your hidden number is on your boat, what your serial number is on your motor, where you live, who you are, all that in information, and then they give you a couple of letters and three numbers, like might be AB123. So that's your number. There's only one boat out there with that number. Okay, so that's your rego number. Now, that goes on either side of the boat. If it's a power boat, what we call a midships in the middle. If it's a um, sailboat, you've got a motor, you still need to get it registered. They just put the sailboat numbers down near the transom, which is just the back of the boat, either side. Okay. Um, so there's a weird, weird thing with um, the skipper's ticket. If you've got a four horsepower motor, you need to get it registered because it's got a motor. I mean, if you had a one horsepower motor on a canoe, you've got to get it registered. Anything fitted or can be fitted with a motor needs to be registered. Okay, so they're talking engine mounts here. So if you can fit a motor to it, it's got to be registered. So if I had a four horsepower motor on my dinghy, I've got to get it registered. But you don't have to come in here and do your skipper's ticket. Okay, what's the minimum age of a kid to drive that? Is 10. So the minimum age to drive a boat with a motor is 10 under supervision, adult supervision, when it gets over 6 horsepower, which is 99.9% .9 of power boats on the water, the minimum age is 14, and then you the restrictions to your 16 and da da da. Um, 
So that's weird. People get registration mixed up with the skipper's ticket. It's not. Registration is just registering the boat. The skipper's ticket is like your driver's license to drive the boat. They're two different things. Okay. And then people get your rego numbers and your rego sticker mixed up, which I can understand because they're both stickers. Your rego numbers go on either side of the boat. Your rego label, okay, that's what you pay your money every year to the government. It comes in the mail. You put it on the port side of the boat. So they can see what colour it is and what, you, and that'll tell them what year it is. And then they've got a big number, might be number three, which tells them March, okay. So the reason why they put it down the port side is because if you meet someone head on, what do we do? We both turn right. You're always passing down the port side. They can see if you stick it, if your registration's current, okay? So there's confusion there in that. So your rego numbers go on either side. Your rego label goes on the port side. Um, port is left. You should know that. Um, now, with the um, eight knots, We've got 8 knots and 50 metres, and there's 8 knots and 15 metres, and there's 8 knots and 30 metres. So, if we just do the 50 metres, 50 metres is most of them. So if I see a boat at anchor, a beach, a jetty, a swimmer, um, a diver. So if you see that flag, this flag, if I can fit it in the screen, blue and white with the chunk taken out of the side. Okay, if you can, if you see that, it's 50, keep clear 50 metres. If you can't keep clear, that's the only one that's not 8 knots. That's dead slow. Okay, dead slow just means maintain steering, tiptoe your way through the area until you're clear. If you can keep clear, please keep clear. Okay, if you're a diver, stay within 50 when you're coming up especially. Um, now, the rest of them is 8 knots. So if I see a boat at anchor or a jetty or a swimmer or mooring, 8 knots. 50 metres. 15 metres is a vessel underway, 1.5. So it's only 15 metres, it's nothing. Okay? And what's 8 knots? 8 knots is as fast as I can run. Nobody can swim 8 knots. It's pretty quick, it's nearly 15 kilometres an hour. So a vessel underway, another boat travelling and you're driving, 15 metres and 8 knots. 30 metres is two jet skis in freestyling mode. So what does freestyling mean? Jumps, donuts. You know, you can't give way to them because you don't know which way they're going. They have course changes every split second. So they can do that within 30 metres of each other. If they get within 30 metres, it's not drop to 8 knots. It's just stop freestyling, okay? Behave normally. And then you've got 50, 50 metres from a boat, okay? So if I'm freestyling on a jet ski and I see another boat, I've got to stop freestyling when I get within 50 metres of that other boat. So 50 metres and 8 knots is for most things. 15 metres and 8 knots is two boats travelling, vessel underway, and then 30 metres is two jet skis freestyling, okay? But if I was freestyling near someone in their boat, it's back out to the 50, okay? <laughs> so they're the numbers you got. Most of them are 50, 15 is two boats, 30 is two jet skis, okay? So that's the rules and regulations. That's probably the toughest stuff. There's that much data in there. Um, like, you know, how far can you stay behind a water ski boat, you know? So if the guy in front falls in the water, you don't run him over, 50 metres. So 50 metres comes up quite often. But um, there are two other main ones, that's 15 metres and 30 metres you need to be aware of, okay? So that's your, um, that's your rules and regulations.